great. Bob's locking us in, so we're in for the duration here. A couple things to go over. Next week we have our 14th annual open house. Um, Akuma will be here, Shimano will be here, all the new Silver Streaks will be here. Um, either Mark or Chip from Silver Streak will be here. I'm not sure on that yet. Um, I'm trying to get uh, the, the one of the owners from Burst Custom Tackle to be here up here also. And I know Normark, which is Rapello, will be sending me some product for giveaways and things like that. So uh, we'll have a lot of stuff going on. And we'll have subs at, at lunch, so that's always a good draw. Um, fishing tournament's coming up. First one is April 16th and 17th is the Spring Fling with the captain's meeting on the 15th. And that is out of Lexington. And that is $10,000 first prize. Um, you see me afterwards, I got all the rules and everything on that and the sign up sheets. The following one will be Saturday, April. That is $200. Yes. Um, the following one will be the 23rd. And that's out of Lexington. And that's also a salmon tournament. Salmon and Lake Trout. And that entry fee is $60. And I have the sheets for that. And that is a one day. I have the sheets. You guys can come look at the sheets here. The following weekend is the Salmon Steaks. Um, it's a one day. -er. Those tickets are 10 bucks. We do not have the tickets here yet. We will have the tickets shortly. Um, every person on the boat needs a ticket for that. For that particular tournament. And that the weigh-in is at the, um, the Voyager, and that is the old River Crab Tournament. The next one we have is Saturday, May 7th, and that's the Can to Can, and that's up in Harbor Beach. So we have four tournaments, all just back to back to back to back, um, four weekends in a row. And then there's a little bit of a lull, and then we are going to be... Uh, doing a walleye tournament. we got John Dewey here. He's going to say a little bit. Right here. So something new we're going to do this year, guys, out of court around here, June 11th and 12th, we're going to have a two-day actual like, walleye tournament. Two-man teams. Everybody leaves out of Port Huron. Everybody comes back into Port Huron. We're going to be doing it down at Desmond. Five fish weigh-in per day. 150 bucks a boat. Like I said, it should be a good shootout. We've had a lot of people from local and out of this you know, general area that are talking about coming, we're looking at probably 50 boats. Um, that puts the top prize money out pretty good. So we've got a Facebook page and a website. Me and Bob are the ones that are running it. Um, all the entry fees and stuff will be handled through the store here. So if you guys got any questions, talk to me or Bob afterwards, like I said, or you know, take one of the sheets and that's got the uh, Facebook page and the website on it. And we've got the registration forms here. When you guys want to start doing it, we can start doing it anytime now. Thank you guys. They put a lot of work into that. It's been a long time coming to have a, a quality walleye tournament, two-day type tournament out of, out of this area. So uh, Today we have Mick Broughton. Um, Mick is a, a local uh, fisherman. He is a factory Akuma rep. Um, we're fortunate to have him in our area. He really promotes the fishing and uh, fishing products. We're able to see some of the newer stuff um, before it's even out on the market, uh, which is nice to, nice for all of us, works out good for all of us. So, uh, go ahead, Mick. Uh, yeah, this is, some of you guys don't know me, like Joel said, I am a factory Akuma uh, rep. Um, it's been for the past two years, and I've also run the pro staff in here in Michigan and Ohio for the last two seasons. Um, responsible for signing guys, make sure what they're doing, and in part, thanks to the to our pro staff, uh, you know, the product has come a long way. And we've got a new product, and uh, with their input, it's a uh, real exciting time to be part of it. Um, that being said, uh, we're you know, going to the uh, seminar. Um, a lot of guys are itching to get out. Um, there's a lot of talk about with the warm weather, the spawn's going to be early. The spawn has a lot more to do than with just warm water. Um, you've got the uh, moon phase and the length of the days and stuff like that. So if there's ice on the river, guys, it ain't, it ain't, you know, it ain't worth it. It's going to be cold. So, uh, 
with that, we'll get into probably the biggest thing is boat control. Uh, if you're on the bow of the boat, you're 95, I believe you're 95% uh, in charge and responsible for catching fish. If you can't control your boat, the other guys in the back ain't going to catch fish. So, uh, the way I do it is we roll, you know, we roll up to our spot. First thing I see a lot of guys do is they immediately drop their line. Um, you want to, you want the boat to establish current speed, uh, get you know, get with the current before you start dropping your line, and then uh, the other thing they do is they drop their line all the way to the bottom right away, just free spool it. Well, a lot of times what happens is it gets there before you know it, and it's halfway up the river and you're snagged up. So what we'll do is drop it down a little ways, check, see if we can feel bottom. Can't feel bottom, just drop down more, and it just seems to be a uh, better way of doing it. And I always use my foot pedal as far as like controlling the boat, burst speed on the river. Um, some guys like to do use the constant speed on the foot pedal. I believe it's it, it's just too hard out here in the river. The current's too fast, so we usually run. Anywhere from like five to seven on the foot pedal on the, on the control, and we just burst it. Just follow your line, follow your line. And uh, as far as wind-wise, you always want to follow into the wind. And like I say, just just follow along. It's, it's nothing but practice. If you're if you're new to it, go out in the lake or go out in a different part of the river, and uh, you know, just be by yourself. You know, I've spent many days on this river without even a, a fishing pole. Not the fishing, but I don't call it cold, I guess it's a better rod. Um, just looking at bottom content in the river. Um, I was telling somebody here earlier, I use, uh, I use my side scan in the river more than my traditional sonar. Um, if you, if you're, you're looking for any in, in, you know, depression in the river, a hump, rock, a drop off, anything. Out here in the St. Clair River, where you see the guys whipping, they're there for a reason. I spent a whole day just kind of you know, looking where these guys are at, and with my side scan, you can you can go down the river, and you can see why they're there. It, you can see every every depression and then where these guys are set up ahead of them, and then I you know, use a mark them, mark them on your side scan. Um, so. Probably about the you know the easiest way way to do it is like I say, a lot of guys have a hand control. I, I leave that in the in the glove box. Uh, I learned with the foot pedal. Uh, when I first started doing, I had a cable drive, and uh, now <coughs> I use the uh, new color throw. Uh, as far as jig wise, we use. Uh, Five eighths, <coughs> three quarter, and one ounce gator grabber jigs. Joel's got them in stock. Hey, Nick, can you speak up a little bit? Up higher? Yeah. Let me yell. Talking to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk to my wife. <laughs> so, um, as far as I guess we will. The jig and cadence. When it's when it's cold like this, it's slow. I mean, guys, I mean, it's slow. I mean, you're barely barely even moving your jig. Um, I see a lot of guys out there you know, fish a lot on the Detroit River, and you know, just they're out there like this, out there like this, out there like this. And uh, I mean, pretty much. I mean, it's just six inches. When you think you're going six inches, you're probably going more like a foot, 15 inches. When you think you're going six inches. Um, so when you're, you know, one of the things, you, you know, if you're not catching fish or whatever, if you think you're going slow, slow down even more. Um, a couple years ago, like for instance, a couple years ago, I thought 
you know, just myself, uh, we, were, we were slow or whatever. We, were, we filmed uh, Michigan Out of Doors. <coughs> and uh, looking back on the tape, man, I was out there like this. You know, I'm just, just doing whatever, you know. Probably nervous of being on film or whatever, you know. So, um, rod wise, I don't like anything over six foot. Um, something in a good quality graphite, like IM8. Um, something like if it's a soft tip, you can see that I only like really the first part of the foot of the rod really bends. Um, if all you can afford is, you know, an IM6, you know, like Joel's got the reflection series, I've got some of them back there. The sixty-five dollar rod. Um, if you can afford more, you know, I wouldn't spend any more than one hundred fifty bucks myself. Um, reel wise, if you're spending more than fifty bucks on a reel, you're wasting your money. All it is is a winch. You know, reel and good, good anti reverse. We don't even use a drag. You know, fish like that. We don't use. We don't even use the drag. At least winch them in. You know, the quicker they get in the boat, the less time we feel the, the hook has time to work, work on the mouth, and you know, then they're off. They could be in the stinger, and then it's, you know, it's a 50-50 thing. You know, you're going to either lose them or you're going to get them in. But, you know, that's, how we, that's how we like to do it. As far as baits, finesse, Minnows. As far as live bait, I never use live bait ever. Um, it's just a waste of time waiting in line to get, get minnows or whatever. I never, I never, never leave the dock without a smelt finesse and a black and silver jig. Ever. That's, that's my go-to. You know, guys that I get my jigs from, and that they say, you know, what do you want for color, or whatever. And then, you know, they're like, oh wait, black and silver. I mean, that's black, silver, and lead is what I. That's, that's my go-to thing. But you know, dirty water. If you want to put on, uh, you know, chartreuse or whatever. I mean, it's uh, it doesn't hurt. But I think the bait is more important than the jig head itself. Um, we use Detroit River mainly, wind dot worms, rib worms, uh, a couple other colors that are hot, hot like uh, Saginaw River, if you don't have blue ice, there you have blue ice, Arkansas Shiner, Mackerel, and then when it when it's ex the first part of the year, when it's extremely cold, I'll use a paddle tail. Uh, these are walleye assassin. Uh, Lunker City makes them too. Uh, the walleye assassin seems the tail is a little, little more limber. Uh, gives it a little more action. Uh, when, it, when it's cold too, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll just hold the jig. Feel bottom, pick it up, pick it up like an inch, and just hold it. Don't, don't do anything with it. And then you know, hold it, and then pick up a little bit more, and you'll just you'll just feel it. Uh, you know your males are, are there's days where they're just more aggressive. You can do anything, but uh, especially like when we're fishing these spawning fish, the Detroit net, it's, it's hold it, and then you'll feel it, and then you know. Set the hook, and you, you know it's ten pounds, eight pounds. Uh, as as the water warms up, you know that's when you get into a little bit more aggressive jigging, and uh, you know that seems to work best. Once once the females leave, the males are in there, and everything's a little more aggressive. Same with up, you know, fishing up here. We're not really you're not really fishing here to target target spawning fish. <clears throat> Um, they, 
they, there are spawning fish here, but the DNR tells us that less than half of the spawning fish do, uh, spawn, do not, you know, less than half spawn in Detroit. Uh, most of them spawn in the Maumee River and out in the uh, reefs, uh, reefs of Lake Erie. Um, that's one reason why you'll hear, uh, you know, 2003 was a good spawn year. Um, when they're spawning, when they're spawning in the reefs, they lay the eggs on the reefs, and if we don't, if everything doesn't come together, <coughs> as far as the like wind and current, and the, you know, you think, well, there's no current in the lake, well, there's, there's a ton. And if you don't have the current to keep the eggs free of silt, it is rot. So that's that's one of the things that goes on. You know, everybody seems to think that the, the, the Detroit River is. Uh, you know, the spawning grounds, but it's it's not. Um, it, it's an excellent place to fish for spawning fish <coughs> and big fish. But you're, you know, it, it's it's over. You know, second week in April, and it's sometimes the third week. You get on the Canadian side, you get a little, little longer. The, the water stays cooler on the Canadian side. One thing guys do as far as we get back on like on boat controls, or if it's windy or whatever, guys tend to they want to stay home. Um, when it's windy, as long as you're going to be safe, go. You know, it's, it's uh, you're, you're gonna you're, you're gonna become a better angler if you, you, you can control your boat when it's windy. Um, I've had my best day on the Detroit River. With winds in excess of 30 miles an hour out of the southwest, uh, by noon, Bowmont was on 10, ticker was down in here, and waves coming over the bottom. That day we weighed 49 pounds, and it was uh, that was a Michigan Valley Tour record. It no longer stands. Uh, and then we, we backed it up the next weekend. Electronics. One of the biggest things that you can you, you can get more for your electronics for less money now. I guess is uh, one of the easiest things to say. But you're gonna want you want GPS. You want to be able to follow your GPS. If you get off, you can get off. I've had days where you get off that you know you're drifting here to the wall. You're not catching fish. So uh, you can zoom in on them. Zoom in on your electronics. You know, so you can stay on your drift and uh, you can catch more fish. Uh, another another thing guys do too is like say you're catching fish in 24 foot of water. The bite slows down. Well, I go to another spot in the river. I go to a spot with 24 foot of water. That's where you know that's where they're going to hang out. I'm not going to go to a spot that's 40 foot of water. You know, you're kind of wasting your time. Like I said, I touch, touch base on uh, the side scan. I use my side scan more than I do my down scan. I run the uh, Hummingbird Onyx series. <coughs> as far as what to look for out here, uh, you know, any creek coming in, Black River, Pine River, uh, River Bends, Inside Bend, Outside Bend. When that current hits that outside bend, it makes a makes an eddy, forms a hole. Uh, some jig, you know, jig them areas. Uh, when you're jigging out here, you know, right right out the Black River, if you pay attention to your boat speed, you'll get to a certain point down just before the gray fox, where your boat will slow down. And uh, you know that that's why the fish are there. I, you go down a little bit farther, and then it'll speed up again, you know, behind the gray fox, and then you know, there's a big hole there. You just got to watch out for all the pine.
island is now here. Um, in the morning, uh, before they started, before they redid the shoreline here, I'd fish right up on shore. I mean, we'd be catching fish in my outdrive, banging off the rocks. You know? um, so don't be afraid to go, you know, <coughs> go to, you know, too shallow. They're, they're there, especially if it's dirty. You know? um, another thing is dirty water. It's, you know, dirty water is not always dirty from top to bottom. <coughs> A lot of times there's, you know, there's, it's dirty on the top, and that's just, it, it tells them fish that, you know, basically like it's night, so they're there. Water's clean. You know. um, if you got any doubt, if you're fishing dirty water or whatever, just go, go gaudy with your, with your uh, plastics, chartreuse pink, um, chartreuse jig head, uh, scent. Uh, we use rattles. Buckshot Northland rattles, too, in the dirty water. Um, that's that's uh, some other stuff you can do. As far as line, I use nothing but braid. 100% braid. If you're not using braid, you're missing out. <laughs> I, I run this Sunline. It's uh, 10 pound, I believe, or 12 pound. But it's a diameter of a, like one or two pound, I believe. Um, before that, I was using six pound, and you can you can winch a truck. And, uh, you know, it's <coughs> if you want to use a leader, it ain't gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt anything. Easier to break off. One of the things, hopefully I'll, I'll cook myself. But when you get snagged up, one of the first things you can do is, is immediately, immediately open your veil. And then uh, let some line out, close your veil, shake your rod tip. Most of the time it'll come off. Um, if that doesn't work, Rod tip directly at the snag, take up all the tension, and just snap your line two or three times, and normally it comes out. And if that don't work, don't grab a hold of the line. I won't have my fingers left. Grab a hold of the spool and just break it off. And it. Don't be the guy that's going back to get your one dollar jig through a pack of fifty. Another thing I see out here, and it's it pretty much makes the day, is when the guy gets done with his drift and he wants to blow right up through with a pack of boats. It's all over, guys. It's done. A boat, I know you scuba dive, right? <coughs> Have you ever been under there with a boat come over top of you? Oh, yeah. From what I, my buddy scuba dives, he said it's like a freight train. So, you know, I don't, you know, the walleye, you're going to feel that with their ladder line. It, it's done. You know, that's why the bite shuts off. <clears throat> Same thing can happen with uh, when fish are schooled up. You got 50 boats rolling all around, 50,000 different million jigs. You know, you're catching fish, that school is scattered. That's why you'll see guys out, even like uh, on the lake out here, you'll be fishing that one drift, then they'll all move. And then so they'll move to a different pod, and then they'll move back. They just keep moving back. Then the fish will eventually come back, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, one of, them, one of them things. One of the biggest things around here we struggle with is the clear water. And it kind of sucks because you got to get out of bed early, you know, to go to go fishing. I mean, you'll see a lot of guys coming out when the fishing's already done. The guys are done. They've been out since four in the morning. 
got the limit and put it back in. Um, touch base with uh, jigging in the fall in the lake. A lot of guys don't do it. I see more and more boats, but uh, for the most part, you know, guys are hunting. And who, who the guys that are out there, you know, they're, they're benefiting. Number of different ways you can fish them out there. Um, you know, the jig and spoon. One of the things we like to do, what I do with the jig and spoon, with some guys, with different people, some, is uh, I use a just a cheap, bigger barrel swivel. Seems to keep it from tangling up on top of itself. A lot of guys tie direct to the to the jigging spoon. I learned from some guys out in Nebraska. Out in Nebraska, they call it slabbing. Not exactly sure why. I never got an answer out of them. <coughs> um, but that's what they call it. When you get out in the lake also, <coughs> lipless crankbaits. Like uh, Savage Gear Fat Vibes, uh, Salmo Horn, uh, Salmos. You, you won't see a lot of guys doing it. The nice thing about it is you don't have to be vertical. If you are vertical, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, <coughs> we're piling jigging wraps and Moonshine shiver metals. You get about, say, uh, about 30 degrees behind the boat, 40, 45 degrees behind the boat, and snap it. But you gotta, you gotta go back on a, on a loose line. You don't want to go back on a tight line. Um, gives that, it gives a darting action. It's just something new, something different. Um, you don't want to do it. You don't want to waste. You know, get too far close to the brick to the bridge. Or you're going to be losing, you know, seven dollars digging um, <clears throat> Anybody got any questions so far? Yeah. You ever use blade baits like silver buddies or blade <coughs> blade baits and that? Yeah. Yeah, you can use them out there. Um, Believe it or not, you know, with the with the heavier shiver mills, the one-ounce shiver mills, you can stay vertical out there. Um, but I've caught more fish being not vertical. Just something new, something new to try, you know. That's basically about the same question. So the jig and repeller knows you don't want to be straight. You know, you try to stay straight, you actually want to run back as you're just a little bit behind you. Because know, it gives that darting, I mean, pick it up. Both the old darts that way, darts this way, darts that way. It's just something different, you know. When uh, trying to trying to trigger them when they might get a little bit negative, the fish get negative. Um, <coughs> I use ex like I said before, I use exclusive exclusively the Gator Grabber jigs. Um, this jig is different than any other jig that you're going to find in Michigan. It has the eyelet is moved back on them, and it gives the <coughs> jig a more horizontal presentation in the water, hanging straight, hanging free. So it's not, you know, it's not down like that when you're, you know, when we're fishing. Like I said, we like to fish a lot, just holding the, just holding. And the fish, uh, the, they all come with Matt Zero sickle hooks. Always use a stinger. I never, I'm never without a stinger. Stinger hook. Do you put the part of the hook into the tail of your bait, never. or you let it hang it free? No. Hang it free. No. Okay. When that when that bait's down, <coughs> say that bait is sitting on the bottom. The nice thing with these jigs too, when it sits on the bottom, it doesn't fall over. It, it sits up like that. So now you got your stinger hook on the back, and it's usually about that long. I don't run short ones. 
that stinger hook being free is the first part that that fish is going to suck into the mouth. Not really, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you got to use the lightest jig to, uh, for the fish to suck it in their mouth. Well, if you got a stinger hook on it, you know, it doesn't matter. So always, always, always use a stinger hook, even if we're, you know, the, the better you get at jigging, the less you're going to snag up. Uh, we don't go, even on the Detroit River, we don't go through a lot of jigs unless we're in the Trenton Channel. And I don't fish the Trenton Channel for that reason. <coughs> Unless we're in the tournament and you have to, I don't fish it. So, any other questions? So I string the number eight or ten. This one here is a. What did he say? I just grabbed these off the shelf. I couldn't find mine. I don't know what I did with them. <coughs> um, number eight or ten. It usually about that long. Tournament time, sometimes we'll tie our own, and I'll go with like a mason hard type. <coughs> makes the stinger stiff, where it's not falling down. Um, it'll stick straight out, and just the mason hard type, you're less likely to break off, just for tournaments. Um, when you put that uh, barrel swivel on your jigging swivel, do you, do you put it right on the spoon or do you put it up on your line? Or? No, I just put it right on the, right on the spoon. <coughs> just right on, right on the spoon and it doesn't, uh, it just seems to help it from tangling out. You know, like I said, I got that from my buddies out in Nebraska. And they use a lot of, uh, a lot of, they actually use a lot of different jigging spoons out there, some rattling spoons and all the same concept, but, you know, the same thing. <coughs> I uh, would like to tell you about fishing at Fort Clinton. My son brings a bigger boat up and I go down and I have somebody drive me down and we get a motel for two nights. But at Fort Clinton, there's a dock right in town and then there's one off to the west. But you don't pay for putting your boat in. No, Ohio's got some of the best ramps in well, it's really a busy place, and they have a break wall to stop the big waves, but mm -hmm. we don't go out in bad weather. Right. But you can go six, seven, eight miles out west of Kelly's Island. There's a green buoy, and here I was casting out, catching walleye, and the grandson and his friend wanted to go water skiing. <laughs> And here I'm catching fish, so I wasn't too happy about that. But they down there, they have at least three fish fitting places, and they put your fish through a machine, and it scales them, and it uh, opens them up, butterflies them, and uh, they clean them, and put them in a package, and all you do is go back and pay for how much weight you got. I got one of them too with Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, you know, the Lake Erie is, uh, you know, we'll get in, into the fall fishing on Lake Erie and Saginaw Bay here uh, as soon as we're done with uh, any, any questions on the vertical jig. Do you use a different plastic than these bright you use out here? Not really. Um, last year, early last year, blue ice was good just about everywhere. I don't, I don't know why. Saginaw River is good. Uh, Detroit River was good. Uh, now my tournament partner, he uses all kinds of crazy stuff. Twister tails, uh, bass worms with big tails on them. I mean, all, and he catches fish. I mean, so, um, for whatever reason, you know, the wine dot worms don't seem to do real well here. Uh, he's a I'll use a rib worm up here a lot, like this one here. That's Lunker City, too. Um, but other than that, no, not really. I mean, it's pretty basic. You know, purple ice. Uh, and that's one of the things, uh, <clears throat> you know, being with Akuma, I have a, I had a, I used to, I just gave up the charter, or the, the pro staff to pursue my, 
charter company. Um, but I have some of the best captains that on the Detroit River and on the pro staff. So learning from them, I mean, you know, there's I got one guy, Captain Ken Clark. Uh, he fishes with Lunker City mackerel. That's it. I mean, that, that's, that's it. He does 30, 30 days, double trips on the Detroit River every day, and that is all it's on is mackerel. With the same color jig on every pole, and that's how he does it. And he's one of the best on the river. Captain Brian Woodard, monkey, monkey does a sport fishing trip. That's who makes these jigs. Uh, he's one of the best on the trip. Right? Same thing. It's all it's, it's all simple stuff. You know, not uh, you're not getting a bunch, a bunch of crazy stuff, crazy colors. You know, I've got. If you see my bags, I mean they're loaded, they're packed with everything, and uh, half the time none of that stuff even comes out. Same with spinner blades. I got a million spinner blades and go back to basic colors, what we use most of the time. About the only time I get wound up is with crankbaits and cloth, different color, you know, customs. So, so run a lot of uh, Berkeley flicker shads. If you don't have a Berkeley flicker shad in your boat, you miss, you miss now. Uh, if nothing else works, they work all the time. I don't know why. Anyway. Any other jigging questions? If you're out there jigging, do you use two poles or? Two yeah, poles? yeah. Um, I run two, <coughs> even in Canada. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, you see a lot of guys out when they're, when they're running two poles, you'll see them doing this. I drive right past some guys because they're bored. That, I feel they're bored, and you know nothing's going on. You, you know, if you're going like this, you're going like this. You're like, oh, 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 it's this one. You know, um, everything is just when you get good at jigging and, you, and your best days on the water, you'll feel you, you're you're just in rhythm. You're just in a rhythm. You just uh, you know, just everything is just just in rhythm. Your best days on the water. You know, that's that. That's about how it is. I mean, if you're slack, pick it up. Slack, pick it up. You know, leave it on the bottom, depending on where you're at. Um, what happens when you hook it? Just throw it, Rod. That, that, that one's not going to sink to the bottom and get snagged? I try to reel up real fast, real fast, and I'll throw it. Um, I'm extremely hard on my stuff. <laughs> I mean... I can be, I guess, because I get, you know, film takes care of me. Um, but you will lose. It happens. I can see it. You know, you drop it at four feet now, just laying it on the deck. Right. It's snagged and it goes to the board. Yeah, it's happened. It's happened soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a bad day. <laughs> when you're out down in the Detroit River, it's, um, what size weights do you use down there? It's got to be a much faster current up here. Yeah, if you can learn to jig up here, don't be afraid to go down there. You, you are, you are, you're already better than half them guys. You know, the current's what, eight miles an hour here. Go down there and you know, uh, five eighths down there. Uh, there's some spots where the current gets. Uh, on the Canadian side, the last and stuff, we're half inch, or a half ounce, I mean. Uh, Trent Channel, half ounce, three eighths. Um, for the most part, five eighths, seven eighths. What's the timeline that where I'd say out here? When do you, when's prime time? We're usually about fish? two weeks later than uh, Detroit. When things are really going on in Detroit, it's usually about two weeks later. Once Detroit's up there, I'm brand new at this chicken. When's Detroit River's up there now? Detroit River is going to pick up. Like I said, that's that's why I touched base on it earlier. Everybody's saying, oh, the spawn's going to be early. It's going to be early. It's going to be early. Uh, one of the things that, that you know me and a couple of my buddies do is we pay attention to what's going on in the Maumee River. 
Uh, when they start catching them in a the Maumee River, Detroit is usually a couple weeks after that <clears throat> when it starts to get going. Uh, Thirty, you know, that's what I say with the ice. I don't even hit the river until I hear the water temperature about 39 degrees. That's when it gets, starts to get interesting. Um, then you get into you know, 44 degrees, 50 degrees, they start to spawn. Um, the spawning is all done at night. So <coughs> you're going to want to fish, start shallow in the morning and then move off down the shallow and <coughs> shallow play. Do you ever use a snap or you always always tie direct, tie direct tie direct to the jig? Um, if you like I said, if you want to use a leader, go with like the spro. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the small spro swivel is the best. Um, I honestly I don't I don't ever use a leader unless I'm worried about abrasion. Uh, that's you know braid when, you know braid this way. Is extremely strong. Braid from the side is not. Fluorocarbon is going to be strong. <clears throat> so I'll fish a you know leader in Saginaw River. A lot of crap there. You know, I don't bother with the Trent Channel because it's just it's the Trent Channel. It's horrible. It's bad. Um, and this. Detroit River is going to get worse as they, you know, they're putting in a, a, a new park in the Trent Channel. So mid river is going to get worse uh, as far as boats. So you're, going to, you're going to see a lot more guys up here, you know, which is good for Joel. Um, and when the fishing slows, you know, out here, you know, then you can you hit the lake. And if you guys remember, probably it was like three or four years ago when we had that big run on the lake. There was, I mean, there was so many boats, the parking lots were full, and you know, and we were pulling. You know, that's when you know we were double, we were doubles, and handing the rod off. <coughs> that's, how, that's how good the fishing was here. I mean, it was phenomenal. But always direct to the jig, never. Direct the braid and you know, way to go. Another reason why we use the braid is too is you know when I say you're chasing your line, the braid lets you see the line about eight, nine, ten inches or so below. You'll look like you're, you're vertical, but if you really pay attention and look below the water, you actually can still get off on the knee. So the braid helps in that. It's good to keep your bow into the wind. So you're out here in Black River. You got a strong self wind. You'll put it in the wind, so you're going to creep yourself along. Like I said, that, that, that biggest day we, we weighed on the Detroit River was southwest wind. And it, I mean, it was brutal. And uh, you know, Balmont was on 10, kicker was down, and waves were coming over the bottom. I don't know, that sounds like breakfast. <laughs> well, it was a tournament too, so I mean, you know, you know, so, you know, a lot of guys don't like tournament. You know, I guess if you can keep it fun, fish a tournament. When tournaments can start coming no fun to you, don't do it. This is supposed to be fun, you know. Um, but, Fishing tournaments and you know, as and being a charter captain, you, you're gonna fish a lot of water that you don't want to fish. Times when you don't want to fish, so it makes you a better angler. We had a nice time last year. We went to St. Clair, the Voyager. We had a, a nice soup dinner in there, and then we came out and they had a big trailer up there, and they had a platform, and they were weighing their uh, fish. Oh, probably salmon steaks? Yeah. yeah. And uh, all the people were sitting in chairs <laughs> around. But we had a nice afternoon down there at the fish tournament. Oh, yeah. yeah. Any other questions on jigging? You guys usually ever fish uh, in Saginaw or Detroit? I know about the bridges fall a lot. 
have to work, you know, hard to be real good. Yeah, I think I see you. Yeah, every day. Um, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I do sometimes. I know you spend a lot of time out there. You you caught a lot on the American side last yeah. year. Which, so yeah. yeah, which is, which was odd, you know, usually the Canadian side in the fall is, that's it. The American side doesn't go. But uh, this, this guy here, he, he killed him. They don't do that so much in Saginaw on your trip, though? Or Saginaw, night? actually Saginaw, they don't jig a lot at night, they cast crankbaits. You know, around the bridge pilings and stuff like that. You know, my Akuma rep uh, turned me on to that. You know, he, he fishes it a lot at night, and it's a lot of current baits versus Jim. Uh, Detroit, you know, the hand line at night all the time. Same here. So. Any other questions? All right, we'll go into uh, Lake Erie and Saginaw Bay in the fall. <laughs> Another thing, just like jigging out north of the north of the bridge, you know, in the fall, if you're not, you're missing out on some of the best fishing of the year. Um, Lake Erie, Michigan, we got to wait it out. Um, a lot of times we get iced in before we can get to them, but if there's no ice and we can get to them, um, it's it's game on. <coughs> Bulls Harbor, Breast Bay. My last day on the water this past season was December 23rd. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty easy fishing. It's pretty simple. Planer boards, stick baits, crank baits, uh, perfect tens. I run a lot of uh, deep huskies, perfect tens. We're fishing probably 18 feet of water all the way up to like six feet of water. Um, Planer boards. I like to like put my boards extremely wide away from the boat as long as there's nobody around. You, know, you got to be curious. Um, the TX12 is probably one of the most underutilized boards on the market. Everybody thinks you need a giant board. If you're not pull, even pulling even a deep husky, 50 back or whatever, um, it, it doesn't phase it. Um, they don't get as far away from the boat, so what I'll do is I'll run the TX-22 on the outside. So we got, I usually fish with two guys, so we're only running six rods. And then I'll run the TX-12s. <coughs> then you don't have to worry about clearing lines. Because uh, you know, the big fish will pull them straight back. As far as rods on uh, trolling, an expensive rod, you know, you don't need an expensive rod. Uh, something like this collapsible dead eye. How many are familiar with the, the Akuma Magna Pro? The Magna Pro has been all, it's all redone. It's, uh, uh, not only cosmetically, but the line counter, new line counter, new uh, anti-reverse inside. So for 60 bucks, you know, that, that really, <coughs> it, it's a really good way to go. We, it's brand new. We've had we tested them this fall. We had several, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven pound fish. Didn't phase them. We're real happy with it. Um, so you can get away with. Yeah, it's about a hundred dollar combo, roughly. Um, you want to step it up. What most of our pro staff runs is this rod here. It's actually listed as a bottom bouncing rod. Eight six collapsible. One of the things we try to do is take human error out of the fighting the fish. That's what I like to do anyway. I don't know if it's not. So as you can see, it's 
the rod with a lot of tip. That's quite a bit of tip, quite a bit of back there. <clears throat> Does a number of things. Fish hits your planer board, the rod takes up. The rod takes it up. Fish don't feel it. Fish don't feel it. Really. And fighting the fish when the fish gets close to the boat, everybody knows the walleye makes a run at the boat. So the rod takes up most of the uh, the of the fish. Something new for this year is the Akuma low profile reel. It's been extremely, people are extremely interested in it. Uh, it's it's our strongest reel in the lineup at this point. And one of the reasons why the cold water is a composite construction, or not pole, it's a magna pro. And the cold water is a graphite construction. The new low pro has a graphite side plate, aluminum housing, and aluminum uh, reel side plate, which makes everything rigid. So it's, it's by far our strongest reel in the lineup now. And the, and the low pro, I mean, it just works good. We fit more in a rod locker. It's not as bulky. Um, we can fit like four, four to six colors of lead, 400 feet of 10 pound. Some of you guys may interested in this setup here with the guys that went the new low pro on a whipping rod. Fits in your hand nice. Nice setup. Be the last reel you buy. Exactly what I got. It's awesome. Yeah, we did it last year. It was a real nice reel for whipping. Yeah. It'd be the last reel, you know, mm -hmm. buy it once, you yeah, can have to buy it again. What's the price? They retail for $159. I got them at 144, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get a deal. <laughs> uh, back to jigging rods. As far as what I'm set up on my boat, uh, <clears throat> chartering, I use an inexpensive IM6 with, this, with a $50 Akuma reel. <coughs> so you got about Hundred and five bucks into the whole setup. I am six. Joel carries them. Probably the uh, like I say, you don't want to spend more than fifty bucks for a reel, but this is probably the nicest fifty dollar reel that I've had. What's the name of it? Reflection. Sorry. The reel. Oh, uh, same art. Same art thirty. It's a thirty, but it's actually it's it's more closer to a twenty size. Which, yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. You know, I've seen some guys come from Ohio fishing some of our tournaments here for the first time. And uh, it looks like they've been, they come back just from a saltwater trip. You know, like a 30, 45 reel off their jig. You know, and we don't want to be you guys about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, another ride. Reflection bait caster. Joel carries these two. And the six six. Like I said, I, I prefer six footers, but the six six are pretty just fine. Like I said, did I touch base on why we run the short rods? No. All right. Basically, when you know when the fish are biting, when it, when it's when it's on, you can catch. Fish on any, any, any rod, really. Um, as the bite gets tougher, the shorter the rod and, and the more the more quality of graphite, it's a shorter time before you, when you feel it. So you might, if you got a seven foot rod or seven six, and you feel that tip, and you go to set the hook, it's, it's gone. The shorter the rod, the sooner you're going to feel the bite. Uh, and fatigue-wise, you, know, you want something. You're out there all day. Um, 
And as far as fighting the fish too, the fish are you know, way out there. You know, not having to go inside or whatever, or run around with a fast guy. <clears throat> Any other questions on Lake Erie and Saginaw Bay? Saginaw <laughs> Bay is good for the fall or the river? Where's Saginaw Bay in the fall? I thought by August it pretty much done after Saginaw Bay. I know, that's what most people Yeah, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> um, once the water gets below like 55 degrees, Saginaw Bay, it'll start to turn on. Uh, in December alone, Linwood launched out of, out of one day. One day, <coughs> Linwood launched over 300 boats. So that'll tell you how, how good the fishing was. And, uh, a buddy of mine, Rob Ruckman, uh, he's kind of the one that's turned it on. You know, him and John Gilman, my guys know John Gilman. So it's, uh, it's pretty, head out of Linwood, head out about 21 feet of water, the cigar. They're, there. They're making their migratory back to the, back to the Saginaw River. They're staying in that front. You know, if you were getting them, let's just say when we had them early winters, and you were getting them on the ice, go, go wherever you're getting them on the ice. That's where they're going to be. And as, as, and as <coughs> December gets later, the same thing. <coughs> as December gets later, them fish will move even around the island out there, and you'll get them there. But if you can get out, get out there. You're at a church now, so you don't like your uh, board to release it up? Nope, I run the lockjaw clip. I run the lockjaw clip, and... Um, Easy system just snaps in there, and I run the run the lock jaw. Nice thing about the church boards too is, say in the summertime we're running spinners, and then uh, you're running spinners, and then you put on a crank or whatever, and the flags down like that. I don't know about you guys, but the noise of crap on me. Easy thing with the church ones, you just flick it. Now your spring tension is heavier. You're all set. Uh, with the easy store system, you can uh, do that. Release the flag, and all the flat and you store them real easy. Same with the TX12. You can, you can leave that loose enough in the vendors. As far as uh, line, I run Sunline Supernatural 16 pounds. It's, uh, it's really close to the dive crews for precision, precision trolling. You can do that on you know, your fall now. You can do it half. Um, precision trolling half. Mark Roman, I think good probably mine. <coughs> Precision trolling, that give you your speed? No, that, that's, precision trolling is going to give you your depth on your lures. Uh, it's, it's easy, just look it up, say you want 10 feet down on a particular lure, you look 10 feet down and then it scrolls another thing and tells you to aim back. It's pretty simple. I mean, fall fishing is pretty simple, guys. It's simple. It's, it's not hard. Another thing, a lot of guys will tell you, don't fish until you find fish, until you see fish in the fall. That's not always true. Uh, there's been countless times where we're catching fish and we never mark a fish. We'll mark them on a side scan, but we'll never, we won't mark them. You know, that's, that's where, I guess, years on the water, waypoints and stuff like that, in the fall, they'll come, they'll come back to pretty much the same places. You know, so... Once you once you establish you know, where you're going to fish, it's kind of like perch fishermen. You know, they, they just the guys that do well do well all the time, just because you know. I, I believe perch come back to their you know, their year after year too. Yes. 
this. Another thing we can talk about is uh, this new camera from Akuma called the Water Wolf. I think Joel's going to be carrying them. Yeah, I just last week I started checking out. There was a nice price drop on those. So. This thing's addicting, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, it's addicting, and it'll, it'll drive you a little crazy, too. Because you'll see fish, fish will follow your lure for 10 minutes. And, um, basically, it just goes in line. Run your crank or your spinner, run your spinner right off the bat, it comes with weights. I've had this camera down north of the bridge, and one of the reasons why north of the bridge out there is so good, it's just sand dunes. It's all that's out there. For the most part of the lake, it's sand dunes. And then you just tuck, you can see it in the zebra mussels and everything in it. It, it almost looks like a spawning bed of bass or whatever. But then walleye, you sit behind them sand dunes. It's why, they, you know, they're out of the current. So, you know, it's basically just like jigging it. Any, any depression, a big rock, or piling, anything that, that cuts the current. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, the camera's been out about two years. Ago. Where do they run? They retail for like two, 219 is what the retail is. But I, I, so there's a price drop and I believe there's a uh, a rebate. There's a rebate too. So you might want to check on that too. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about the bridge, I can only go up there. Is there other spots to go? Is it time of year? Is I know it's just kind of untapped and there's no point trying it? Or you got to be fish up there to get going, you think? It's something I know a lot of guys have talked about, you know, like me and Rob Hoover and Jeff yeah. and stuff, and we've talked about, you know, them fish are coming from somewhere. So it's no different than uh, you know Lake Erie when they're coming from the what you know the east side over to the west they're coming from somewhere they may be coming from Kettle Point uh, you know I've caught fish north of the bridge that <coughs> tag into the, the tip of the wasp <coughs> I've caught two fish out there I think it, I think it's something in the presentation too I've got a big salmon boat and I've tried to troll out there like you would Saginaw Bay or Lake Erie where, <coughs> where I can do well and I've tried it out here and it's something's missing we're, I mean I catch fish I catch fish but not, not numbers, but not yeah really and it's like why do that when those guys I watch the guys jig and just limited and they're on the way home and I still got two fish so. yeah what we're talking about is trying to catch them in their transition mm -hmm. from wherever somewhere farther out in the lake yeah, yeah. They, you know they got to be coming from somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. I have a hard time because I do most of my my promotional stuff in the fall, my pictures and stuff, my big fish, spring and fall, and so I, I go where I know there's fish. I right? figure that's what it was. Most people know where the fish are that time. You're right. kind of untapped. You don't look for them. I just kind of. I mean, we we've got an excellent fish here. It's, it's it's phenomenal, and it's and it's getting better. Like some me and Joel were talking about. You know, the fish staging outside of the Black River seems to be getting more and more every year. And it seems to be more consistent. Does anyone know what was going on with the dredging by the Black River fall time? Were they putting a spawning bed there? Or does anyone know what? Yeah, it was, was maintenance. It was, it was just general maintenance. General maintenance. I didn't know they were putting gravel down, gravel bed No, it, it didn't help things at the time. They already did that last year. They did the spawning grounds out in front last year is what they did last year out there. That's all done with already. That may take a couple of years to develop. Yeah. You know, but I know when I was pre-fishing Detroit River last year, Todd Steele, you know, he he called me. He's like, "Oh man, we're smashing them here, and they're they got to be uh, pre-spawn fish coming up the Black River." That's really what I feel. Yeah, them fish they migrate. You know, they come out of the they they come out of the Saginaw River and they turn right, turn left. Um, so in, in the fall they're coming back. It's the same thing in Lake Erie. You know, then you'll catch fish, you know, out in front of Stony Point and, and all that, and they migrate. They migrate to the east. 
<laughs> Mick will stick around for some questions, pick his brain. Yeah. Don't take you too long, but uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Man. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank, let, a round for Mick. Thank, Thank you. you. Again, these guys all do this on their own time. He's not paid, you know, so it's it's nice of him to come in. Um, next weekend, open house. Be a big weekend. Hope to see you guys here.